a heart-punching tale, ladies and gentlemen, of three brothers and the woman in their lives from the perspective of the woman. Get ready to laugh out loud, gasp in horror, sigh with satisfaction, and cry tears during this roller coaster ride of all human emotions. This is an epic first novel from author Pamela Haynes that leaves you wanting more and more by Jove. You even get the first pages of the following book to whet your appetite. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to the Silburn Show and with my guest, Miss Pamela Haynes. Pamela, how are you doing today? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for coming on to share us the book, uh, The Loving Brothers by Pamela R. Haynes. Pamela, tell us about the Loving Brothers. I mean, all brothers loving, are loving, isn't it? Loving, loving the, the Brothers. Loving the Brothers, yes. Loving the Brothers, yes. Yeah. Um, they're, they're, they're actual a set of brothers. Yes. So you'll be introduced to Manly um, um, Junior mm -hmm. and Marcus um, yes. Morgan. Um, they're from a close-knit um, Jamaican family yes. um, based in um, South London. And um, the book explores their relationships with their partners. And, and I think one of them loved to cook. Um, yes, yes, they do. <laughs> yeah. mm. Now, what, what sort of... Um, inspired you to write Loving the Brothers? Yeah. Um, I've been a senior probation officer mm. for over 30 years. Yes. And during my career, I've had the privilege to work with perpetrators and victims of domestic abuse. Mm. I say privileged because um, I got to hear their stories, yes. um, their backgrounds. And um, about three years ago, I was um, coming up to my um, 47th birthday and I was thinking about things on my bucket list that yes. I wanted to um, complete and there were one or two things that I wanted to do before reaching my milestone birthday. Yes. It was either do my masters mm -hmm. and get another qualification or write a book yes. and um, I decided to write a book so that's what in terms of inspiring me yes. it's based on my career and also just uh, wanting to leave my mark on the world and leave a le legacy for my children. It, it's, it's interesting um, you said um, leaving a mark, a legacy, because legacy is something which is not many times around, because uh, especially in the Caribbean community, for argument's sake, uh, persons pass on and uh, you can't find anything of them. Now, probation, is a very key area and probation is a key area now in regards to like young people and the world uh, let's just get straight into it like like knife and gun crimes and yes. everything, like what's happening in london yeah. what's your take on that because you said based on your experience and based on what you have been doing yes what's your take on that um i've managed teams who have managed um yes. who've managed gangs in the um, in the past and i think it's a lot more compl complicated yes. than probably we have time for yes, here yes. But I do believe that when um, young people aren't shown the right way, when they aren't grounded, when they have no idea of self, um, mm. when they are adopting other stereoty stereotypical behaviours, um, copying, um, you know, what they may have seen on on, on TV, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, especially around um, um, culture um, yeah. and adopting a very American um, culture as well. Yeah. That, um, that you know they don't have no grounding, so they tend to um, wherever the wind blows, they you know they tend to be mm. there. So therefore, we're talking about a lack of effective foundation, then, if anything. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Marry that now with the characters in this book. Um, let's go with Manly. Yes. See Manly. Let's yeah. talk about Manly. People say, "Oh, Michael Manly from Jamaica, mm -hmm. <laughs> Prime Minister." You know? Yes, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah he was named after the really? Prime Minister. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So um, he is the eldest. Um, he has had experiences of growing up in um, Jamaica and coming here very much in his formative years. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a, um, he found it very difficult to make the transition from going up, growing up in Jamaica yeah. to the educational system here. Mm. So that's the start of his, um, some of his issues yeah. in terms of being able to adapt to situations. Um, he came over, he was separated from his siblings. Yes. So there was some anxiety yes. of when you leave your family behind and you come to an environment that can be sometimes hostile yes. as well. So he's struggling with those kinds of issues. Yes, yes, yes. Um, 
when the family <coughs> got money, they sent for their, their second son. Yeah. But in terms of his personality and um, being into football and being quite sportive, he was able to, um, you know, settle quite quickly. Yeah. And he also benefited quite well from the educational system mm -hmm. um, here. Mm -hmm. And then you have um, um, the youngest one who was left in Jamaica and yes. brought up by his grandmother. And when it came time for him to join the family in the yeah. UK, he didn't want to leave. Yeah. And um, the grandmother persuaded yeah. um, his parents to leave him in Jamaica. Yes. When he eventually came, he was already in, in, a, a, in his late teens mm. and very much resentful of the fact that he wasn't sent for. Wow. Yeah. So I discussed those kind of issues as well around young people who mm. are brought up by grandparents in the Caribbean. Um, they don't always have their, um, their eye on you as yeah. they should. Yeah. And um, that left him open to um, being taken advantage of and being, uh, being abused. Many influences that came in his life. Yeah. Mm. Right. In interesting. It, it is noted that someone said um, it isn't a male bashing book, which is right. Yeah. <laughs> mm. They see kindness and consideration for Marcos, for Marcos yeah. and negative personal traits of the other brothers are viewed. Now, let's talk about Marcus and mm. the, this positive character. Yeah. I mean, he's very different from his siblings. Yes. And um, in the book, you will see reasons why that, mm. um, that is. Um, he's an all-round good person. Yes. I mean, he calls um, Patty affectionately Empress, you yes. know, throughout the whole book. So he has um, quite high standards around and values around valuing women yes. and so on. And... Um, it's a shame because some women are holding out, waiting to see when Marcus turns into a bad uh, um, character. Yeah. And I've actively sought to keep Marcus as a good person mm. um, because um, we need balance in the book as well. Mm, mm. And, and also, I think sometimes uh, we pray to God and we ask for a partner to come yeah. into our life. And we dismiss them because maybe they don't show up how we're expecting oh, them yes. to. So in the beginning, Patty's not attracted to um, Marcus, yes. um, but she does give him the time of um, day and it's ended up being a really positive um, relationship. So sometimes as women, yeah. we dismiss men for not being tall yeah. enough, yeah. not being the right um, complexion, not being educated yeah. enough, yeah. but actually yeah. inside in terms of their values and what they stand for, and where they want to go, they're mm. actually, they're, they're good men. Is it being a, a senior probation officer, which you are, gives you that sort of insight to be patient? Oh, there have been a few <laughs> characters who have driven me, you know. Um, I, I, I suppose it does take a certain quality, yeah. especially when I was a practitioner, yes. to um, manage some of the difficult people that yeah. we have to, and you, you can only do that by being consistent. Yeah and um, not making promises that you can't yes. keep, but um, also admitting when you're out of your depth and seeking support and advice. I think those are the kinds of qualities. Um, service users prefer that kind yeah. of honesty rather yeah. than pretending that you're the font of all knowledge. And I tell you why I say that, because you mentioned about um, persons have perceptions of persons or men or so, ladies. Yeah. So therefore, they have got to actually be patient to see who the real person is than to draw a, a conclusion. I think you're absolutely right. I yeah. think some women are too much of a rush to be in a relationship mm -hmm. without taking proper time to get to know the person yeah. that they're going to be um, with. Mm -hmm. um, so they're quick to rush to maybe the bedroom and turn it into a sexual relationship yeah. rather than taking time to be courted, yeah. to talk to the man, to understand where he's coming from, to see how he behaves when he's yeah. angry. You know, all of those kind of things are clues to how that person is going to behave when they're with you. Yeah. Interesting what you're saying. Um, it seems like from the book and what I'm picking up from the book, it is not just about the love in the brothers and the characters, but you're sending another message through the book. What's that other message you're sending through the book? What's the other message? <laughs> 
Um, that's for me, anything is survivable. Yes. You can live through domestic abuse and mm. come through the other end. Mm. That's one of the messages. At any time, a woman can reinvent herself. Yes. That's another message. For example, um, Charmaine is on her own journey yes. and um, starting to um, pick up books and read them, mm -hmm. starting to take more um, care of herself and take her health more seriously so that yeah. she's there for her children in the um, long term. And at any time, a woman can make that decision yeah. to just put herself first. When I talk to women, and when I do my public speaking, mm. I always say, love your partner 100%, mm. but love yourself 101%, mm -hmm. and use that 1% to develop self, whether yes. that's going back to school or going to university or um, painting for pleasure, mm. but hold on to that 1% to meditate and to um, start dreaming your own dreams about yes. what, where you see yourself in life. Yeah. One of the things is that, um, they're from a close-knit Jamaican family. And uh, let's put it into society now. Are we seeing families very close-knit now? Well, my parents came over to, from Barbados mm. for different reasons. My mum came when she was 15 yeah. um, to her father, my granddad, who was already here. He yeah. was here before Rinbrush. Rinbrush. You know, yeah, before I'm finding Rinbrush. a lot of people have been here before Rinbrush. It's, that's it, right. It, there, there is a perception which is going on, which we need to dismantle to think that everybody started from Rinbrush. No, they didn't. <laughs> he, was, he was up here. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we're talking you know, early 40s, mid, yes. mid 40s. Um, so she came up here to join him. Mm -hmm. My dad came up on a four-month work contract when yeah. he was 18 and has been, you know, been here ever since yes. until recently. So they came up for different reasons. But what I admire about them the most mm -hmm. is that they were willing to travel 3,000 miles, mm -hmm. not always going to family. My mother went to her, her dad. Yeah. But my, my dad ended up rooming and sharing a room with another, um, his best friend from Barbados. Yes, yes. And they took those risks. And they didn't necessarily have family with them, but they had a community um, around them. Yes. So I have grown up with um, adopted aunts and uncles who were my parents' friends. Mm -hmm. And when we socialized, it was with those friends and yes. their children. So um, it's about extending your community in the absence of having um, you know, grandparents yeah. and aunts and uncles. Village. It's about that mm -hmm. village mentality. Yeah. So um, I knew that I couldn't go to the shop without being observed by Along somebody the by in the community else. who yes. would have seen Pam yes. go to yes. the shop and to have yeah. an interest in, you yeah. know, in me. And there was also a community of um, you know, um, young black men who I now as an adult, when I look back, were police in the streets as well. Yeah. I mean, I grew up in Cannon Town in East London, yeah. who uh, at that time had the highest number of um, BNP and National Front um, mm. votes. And your enemy wasn't another black person. In yeah. fact, when you saw another black person, my dad gave them the nod, yeah. you know, because yeah. you were acknowledging each other as yes. people of color. Wow. Wow. And our wow. enemy was, the BNP and the National Front. You know clearly who they are. Yep, yes. right. So you didn't fear another black person. Mm. And I think somewhere along the lines, we have become afraid of our own young people mm. who are just congregating like everybody else. Yeah. But when young yeah. black men mm. congregate, they're a gang. And when the other mm. communities do it, they're seen as less of a threat. It's interesting what you're saying, and, and that's why I find it very intriguing about the book, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is that it actually opens up this is like somebody on a particular path write a book a particular way but then through it all um, it opens up a lot of other things and uh, i was at the site of the young boy who got killed in uh in bellingham recently and there were yes. some other guy guys who were there could be their mates or whatever and i went up to speak to them and uh and one can see why someone might want to be a, a bit um concerned because they're like together but then when you actually just try to say something to them, you can actually see they're humans. I know it sounds strange, but they're humans. They're persons that just people just need to understand and not to draw this massive conclusion. And that points to, to me whereby you have created someone who's vexed with your book. You know that? Sorry? Someone who's vexed with your book. 
Have I? Yeah. The person said, I just finished reading Leaving the Brothers by Pamela Haynes and couldn't put it down and was vexed when I got to the end. I wanted more. Right. So, yeah. So you got well, one person who was vexed. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, um, the Loving the Brothers is a, is yeah. a trilogy. Yes. And I suppose they've been left on a cliffhanger yes, with yes. Loving the Brothers and they are eagerly awaiting Loving the Sisters and Loving the Children, mm. which will complete the um, series. So I understand um, people's frustration, uh, frustration yes. about finishing the book and yes. then wanting to know what happens, um, what happens next. She also missed her train. Oh, we've had people um, <laughs> who have train. not um, breastfed their children yes. because they've been into the book. We've yes. had people who've missed their stops on the underground. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm finding that um, particularly adults who don't read, when they read Love and the Brothers, they're hooked from the first page. Yes. And um, they, they're, they're tending to finish the book, you know, in a couple of days um, yes. as well. So that's really good. I've used simple sentence um, structure. Yes. Yes. Um, the font I've considered um, makes it much more easier on yes. the eye that people have commented on. And I've had men and women who say they don't read, who've been able to read yes. Love and the Brothers and have enjoyed it. And, and the thing about society now is that persons don't have the time and so to really spend time the, the concentration span is so very short now yes yep. you know i put a video out they try to keep it three minutes five minutes people used to watch things for hours now they don't have the time yes but it's interesting where you can find books that can captivate someone that makes them want to dig deeper because i don't believe that we should follow the typical trend to say well let's not make it 20 minutes because people span of concentration is short let's make it 20 minutes but make it good yes yeah. Yes, and and I believe also regarding you mentioned about this, the the brothers, the sisters, the children, it's pointing down as a brother's keepers or a sister's keeper or a children's keeper. Yeah, I mean the book is based in London. Yes. Um, so what I've done is I've taken fictional characters, yes. but I've based them in the capital. Mm. I mentioned local places. Yes. Um, some people have used it as a travel guide. So okay. when they've got off at Stratford Station, they've point they've looked up and said that's Westfield Shopping Centre right, that right, right, Pam right, has spoken right, about. Right. I've talked. I, sp I speak about local restaurants. Are there Levi a couple Roots? of yeah Levi <laughs> Roots? And there's a couple Did of you tell real him that he's people. In the book? <laughs> yes, I have. Yeah. You told him, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good. Um, and there are a couple of people who are actually real people yeah. who are um, in the book as well yes. so you know my book's in the library now and the, the lady that helped me get the book into mm. um, the libraries in um, Redbridge said um, um, my dad knows one of the characters you know, one of the real characters in the book yeah. so it's like a small community of um, people who are yeah. enjoying the book because it's local I mentioned local places and, and what you've done you've got the fictional characters and the, and the non-fictional and they entwine yes. to being one. That's right. That's really powerful. Yeah. It's a good concept. And where can people get the book, um, Love and the Brothers? Um, it's, on, it's on Amazon, mm. um, dot co dot uk yes. and Amazon.com. And Marcy's finishing house, Marcy's publishing house as well. Yeah, of course. Yes, yeah. the key one. Well, I want to ask you one thing before you go, though, um, is what sort of mantra or word or proverbs or quotes that you have that inspires you that you like to inspire other well, I've got a few to use at um, different times well for today um, for, 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 for today <laughs> um, the uh, tough times never last tough people do tough times never last tough people do that's powerful yeah. Well, sometimes you just have to push through. If yes. you want to get through with your goals in life, yeah. sometimes you just have to push through them and realise that the tough times won't last, but tough people do. It, it, and, and that brings me back to um, something now, because in domestic violence situations and abusive situations, it's a very tricky moment, isn't it? Because right now, many people are talking about when is the right time to leave? Can you just leave and just come back, you've got to make sure when you leave. What do you say about that bit in domestic violence situations, those tough times for people who are maybe living in that situation? That it is possible yes. to um, overcome yes. and to move to a place of safety. Mm. If you feel that your life is in danger, there are services out there that will remove you yeah. and your family to a place of safety. So I yeah. strongly urge women to contact the National Domestic Violence Helpline. Mm -hmm. The number is 0800 yeah. 2000 
247 and um, get help immediately. Yes. Fantastic. Pamela Haynes, thank you so much for that. I want to ask you one more time. What's your last word? Any more thing you want to say to, to, regarding the book? Any key thing, any key pointer? Um, there are different types of domestic mm. um, abuse, which is covered in the book. Yes. So you will see um, emotional abuse, physical abuse, mm -hmm. psychological abuse, financial abuse, yes. use of male um, privilege. Yes. It's all covered in the, um, in the book, which is why it's resonated with so many men and women who are reading it. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for that. And um, with my guest, Pamela Haynes, and loving the brothers, as you can see, and it may look a bit like it's talking about the brothers, but it's a deeper book. It talks yes. about different aspects of life, society, uh, domestic violence. Um, talk about the family again, and that's one of the things about it, the village. The village is so crucial, whereby people tend to um, work together, build together. Some of it has been slightly um, dissipated, but I believe by capturing these and impregnating the minds of young people today, what we have is a coming back. And something I keep talking about all the while is about rebuilding the village. Even though we leave it from the Caribbean, the close-knit family and people all, all over the place, but I believe with books like these, which is moments in time, which is captivating, like Miss Pamela Haynes, um, will do a massive justice in bringing our community together. And of course, look out for part two, which is the sisters and the children as well. Am I correct, Miss Haynes? That's Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for coming thank on. Thank you for having me. Awesome, awesome. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming on the Silburn Show and for finding more about Miss Haynes. You can actually check our website, which we'll put it on eventually, and you can see some of the details off our website and how you can get the book on Amazon on different places as well. Like, subscribe to The Silburn Show and see you around. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on The Silburn Show. And uh, of course, what I'd like you to do is to like the videos, share the videos and subscribe to the channel. Let people know about it. But the important thing is also to comment. Let us get your comment, let us get your views, so we can understand how to even please you better, ladies and gentlemen. So, as I said, share, like, subscribe. Ah, thank you. I saw you there. You subscribed and you shared. Thank you so much. See you next time.